promise, Lord, never again. But I also know that you know what a weak willed person I am. Don't regret this, Lord. I'm a wonderful person. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, speech, knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love for us, excel also in this act of grace. I'm not saying this as a command. Rather, by means of the diligence of others, I am testing the genuineness of your love. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich for your sake, he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving advice, because it is profitable for you who began last year not only to do something, but also to want to do it. Now also finishing the task, so that just as there was an eager desire, there may also be a completion according to what you have. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what a person has, not according to what he does not have. It is not that there should be relief for others and hardship for you, but it is a question of equality. At the present time, your surplus is available for their needs, so that their abundance may in turn meet your need, in order that there may be equality. As it is written, the person who had much did not have too much, and the person who had little did not have too little. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This uh, text out of 2 Corinthians 8, it's our second reading for this coming Sunday, and this is the portion in which there's sort of a turn in 2 Corinthians. There's this change in the way that Paul is dealing with the Corinthian church. He uh, is doing the work of making this collection for the saints in Jerusalem, for, for the church there in Jerusalem. And he is calling upon them in their generosity, in their love, in their, in their understanding as uh, this, this need to love one another as Christ has called us, he, he's asking them to continue to do this good work in order to, to amass this collection to be able to take to, to care for the people in Jerusalem, in part because some commentators say that they were uh, in greater need because they were in a place in which persecution was very heavily focused. But here we have um, Paul making sure that, that faith is a part of it. That's, that's one of the things that we, that we don't necessarily see here, but it's about, it's about faith. And, and we could talk about his sort of flattering nature of this, uh, wanting, wanting to make sure that, that he, he butters them up a little bit. Uh, but he is also uh, hearkening them back to the grace of Christ, right? To trust that the grace of Christ is enough for us. Though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. That's, that's chapter 8, verse 9. And then he finally goes on to appeal to uh, past history. First, he, he is, is saying that this gift, whatever it might be, this, this notion of a cheerful giver, as he says elsewhere, is, is not according to uh, one's uh, greater ability or lesser ability, but it's the heart of the matter of the gift, right? But then he appeals to something that I think is very important. He appeals back to history of when God rained manna from heaven in Exodus 16. That's the verse that he quotes here in verse 15. The person who had much did not have too much, and the person who had little did not have too little. It's a very interesting story because God rains manna from heaven. This 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 bread or, or crust or whatever it was that came down from heaven that they could make uh, basically tortillas out of, um, that God rained it down on, on Monday, th- you know, Sunday through Thursday, regularly, every day. And then on Friday, as you approached into the Sabbath, he would send more. He would send more than what was necessary for them. Uh, so that they would not have to collect on the Sabbath, okay? But this story is about the fact that people would go out, and whether there were people that were very diligent, 
were not very diligent. Everyone received that which they needed. The, the people who went out and hoarded, the, sort of the, the uh, COVID toilet paper people, right? <laughs> the people who went and amassed toilet paper and, and bottled water and all these things because they were terrified that whatever apocalypse was going to happen. If, if people went out to gather the manna with that same mindset to try and collect everything that they could, some people might be left without, right? Well, here, it, the, the beauty of it is that people would go out and they think they would be gathering so much. And then other people would not be able to gather as much because there would be other people that would get up early in the morning and go do it, and there would be other people that wouldn't, right? And the hoarders were not able to hoard. And the ones who were not necessarily physically able to do certain things or weren't, maybe their heart wasn't even into it, they would still have enough, just as the others had enough. And the story is a beautiful picture for us that God always gives us what we need, always grants to us the measure of what it is that we need, even to the point that we might hit a place in which we look around the world, we look at other Christians, we look at non-Christians, we look at all these different people because that's our job. We judge one another all the time. And deciding, well, I don't have enough. I should be like that. I should be this person or, or, or whatnot. But no, God gives to us what we need for us. That's like we pray in the Lord's Prayer, right? Give us today our bread for the day. Give us our daily bread. That what it is that we need for today. We're not asking for steak. We're not asking for a chocolate milkshake. We're just give us what we need for today. And here Paul takes that story and he uses it to explain the necessity of them continuing to do this gift that they were collecting, regardless of their picture of what they feel about Paul. The gift was what was, nece what was necessary, and it comes out of the work that Christ has done for them. Plus what it is that God is doing in them now, continuing to do in them, so that they might share of their, their money, because the, the thoughts are that the Corinthian church was, church was rather wealthy. It, it was a wealthy city. It was a port city. But that they would have this overflowing abundance to be able to share with those in need, specifically their brothers and sisters in the church in Jerusalem. But then also... Uh, your surplus is available for their need. This is verse 14. So that their abundance may in turn meet your need. I wonder what that abundance is. Is that abundance faith? Is that abundance prayer? Is that abundance uh, their, their uh, ability to share with the Corinthian church when the tables are turned? The ability to care for one another, this mutual uh, need to, to carry each other's burdens as we're told in Galatians. I think it's all of the above. I think it's all of the above. But here is this position of trust, right? To trust that God will provide us what we need for each day. To trust that we can share with one another and not find ourselves lacking. And to trust that God will use others in our life to share out of their abundance with us to care for us. That's the, that's the joy of the church. That's the joy of this extended family that we have, that, that it's a community that comes together and it's not based off of like-minded thinking. It's not based off of like-minded voting. It's not based off of uh, like-minded dressing or whatever. It's based off of a savior, a God, whom we share regardless of our political views, regardless of our, our, our wealth or our poverty regardless of our skin color or anything like that, that this family comes together to care for one another, even if they don't get along that well all the time. And that's the beauty of the church. That's the beauty of the gospel. And so that we give thanks to God. Every day we should give him thanks because that is what he does in the church through Christ always. That it is that uh, though he was rich for your sake, he became poor so that by his poverty, you might become rich. Being willing to be able to say, I'm poor. I'm poverty stricken in who I am as a human being in my frailty, my mortality, and my sinfulness. But he is rich in his mercies and his grace as he gives to me each day. Let us pray. 
Almighty and merciful God, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people. Be our strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith and hope through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, church, go in peace, serve the Lord, and we will see you tomorrow.